Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Psalm 98 is only nine verses. The author is unknown, although the Septuagint says that it is a Psalm of David. Uh, Most manuscripts just say a psalm in the prefix. The occasion is unknown, and the content involves praise and praises to Yahweh because he has extended salvation to mankind. Now, this mention of salvation is coupled with mentions to his right hand and his holy arm, frequent expressions of salvation about salvation, and the Lord extending it to not only Israel, but to the nations. And so there are messianic undertones to this psalm, although it's not considered generally to be a messianic psalm because it's not quoted word for word in the New Testament. The theology involving salvation being extended to the nations through his right hand clearly could allude to Jesus. Um, The New Testament is full of scriptures talking about the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand, speaking of Jesus sitting at the right hand of Yahweh. So let's read now Psalm 98. A psalm. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the earth in righteousness and the peoples with equity. That last phrase we've heard before in the Psalms, uh, word for word. And uh, the Psalm that we heard it from was indeed a Davidic Psalm as well. So here we have repeated mentions, as I said, to salvation. I think I counted four Uh, mentions to the word salvation. And um, we know, of course, from the New Testament that Jesus is salvation extended to mankind. He is the Savior of the world. So we can't help but see um, undercurrents of prophetic references pointing to Jesus. It starts out with an exhortation to worship. It says, sing to the Lord a new song. And then it tells us why. For he has done marvelous things, his right hand And his holy arm have worked salvation for him. Now, Psalm 110, as I've pointed out uh, when we were going through the New Testament, underpins much of the New Testament. Psalm 110, verse 1, is the great messianic proof text that Jesus himself used, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. And so notice the thou, by the way. I was quoting the King James, apparently. But this, the sitting at the right hand of the Father, this is a a position that is understood to be for the Messiah, and Jesus claimed it for himself as the right hand of God, that he would be not only the Messiah, but the Son of God. And so he is the Lord's right hand. He is Yahweh's right hand. He is Yahweh's holy arm. And in this psalm, his right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him, for Yahweh. Yahweh didn't need saving. But the vehicle of salvation was Jesus, the one who is referred to as the Lord's right hand. Then verse 2, the Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. Now, this means it was extended um, uh, not just to Israel, but beyond Israel to the whole world. This salvation is uh, not through Judaism, but through Jesus. Verse 3, he has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. So, of course, Israel is included in the salvation that Jesus came to bring to mankind. In fact, 
Paul wrote to the Jew first. Jesus came to the Jew first. He, of course, was born a Jew. He lived as a Jew. He lived among Jews, and all of his early disciples were Jews. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel, the psalmist pens, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Perhaps when this psalm was penned, that was not yet true. But as a prophecy, uh, it has certainly become fulfilled. All the ends of the earth have indeed seen the work of Jesus. All the ends of the earth have seen salvation extended to mankind through Jesus Christ. And so next comes a call for universal celebration before the Lord because of this extension for mankind of salvation. Verse 4, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp and with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the round's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord, the King. And there is cause for universal celebration and joyful praise and worship because of what the Lord has done for us. We should always be mindful of the grace that the Lord has extended to mankind and to each of us individually. Nature is next personified in the psalm and called to worship. Let the sea resound and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord. And indeed, this is a poetic language talking about rivers clapping hands and mountains singing. And yet, nature itself does proclaim the glory of God day after day and night after night. In verse 9, we see this phrase that I mentioned is repeated in other Psalms, that the Lord will one day come to judge the earth. We know that this judgment, this role of judge of the earth, has been given to Jesus. His heavenly Father delegated that to him, according to the New Testament. So this is speaking of Jesus coming for us as Christians. Verse 9, For he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and all the people with equity. Now I want to read this in the King James just briefly before we close. Verse 1, a psalm. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. The Lord hath made known his salvation. His righteousness hath he openly showed in the sight of the heathen. He hath remembered his mercy and his truth toward the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Make a loud noise and rejoice and sing praise. Sing unto the Lord with harp and with the voice of a psalm, with trumpets and the sound of cornet. Make a joyful noise before the Lord, the King. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Let the floods clap their hands and the hills be joyful together. Before the Lord, Because he comes to judge the earth, with righteousness shall he judge the world and the people with equity. Lord, you have extended salvation to the nations through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You've extended salvation to both Jew and Gentile universally. And we've seen the salvation of Jesus in our own lives. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for your kindness and your mercy. Lord, may we worship you, just like the sea resounds with your name and your worship, and the rivers clap their hands and the mountains sing, may we sing before the Lord. Lord, we know that you will come to judge the earth, and you will judge the world with righteousness and all the people with equity. None of us will be hidden from you, and all of us in the fullness of time will say, Lord, your judgments are righteous and just. Help us to live in such a way, Lord, in the light of eternity that you will judge us worthy of being with you forever. Lord, we know that our righteousness is only found in Jesus Christ. Let us live lives worthy of what he's done for each of us. And in his precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, 
please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.